Moat Kalin. Moat Kalin, sometimes called the Moat, is an ancient stronghold of the first men on the northern edge of the great swamp known as the Neck, in the south of the north. It is less than 20 miles from the headwaters of the Fever River. Moat Kalin is one of the north's most important strongholds, though much of it now stands in ruins. It commands the causeway, the safe route for armies to travel through the swamps of the Neck. Moat Kalin is an effective natural choke point which has protected the north from South Ron invasion for thousands of years. The Kranig men of the Neck know unmapped routes through the swamps, such as narrow trails between the bogs and wet roads through the reeds that only boats can follow. Moat Kalin is a ruined collection of towers located on the Neck. It is part of the north and is subject to the rule of House Stark, but has not been permanently manned for centuries. Subsequently, it is neither a fief nor a residence of any lord, but is still the linchpin of the defense of the north from any invasion from the south. It is an ancient stronghold of the first men. It has degraded over time and only three towers still stand. The towers are arranged in mutually defensive positions, suggesting the heightened tactical awareness of the builders. Moat Kalin was once a great stronghold, with twenty towers, a wooden keep, and a great basalt curtain wall as high as that of Winterfell's. Today only great blocks of black basalt lay scattered about, half sunk in the ground where the wall once stood, and the keep rotted away. The remaining three towers, which are covered with green moss and white ghost skin, command the causeway from all sides so that enemies must pass between them. Attackers face constant fire from the other towers should they attempt to attack any one tower, wading through chest deep water and crossing a moat full of lizard lions. The children's tower is tall and slender. It has only half of the crenellations of its crown. Legend has it that the children of the forest called upon their gods here to send the hammer of the waters to smash the neck. The gatehouse tower, the largest of the remaining towers, is squat and wide. It is the only tower which still stands straight, even retaining some of the walls around it, although a tree grows through its northern side. The tower's hall of dark stone is spotted with lichen and has a high, drafty ceiling. Within the hall is a massive carved table, also of stone. The drunkard's tower is so named due to its great lean. It stands where the south and west walls once met. Moat Kalin was constructed by the first men during the Dawn Age, and, despite falling to disrepair, has since then remained an important strategic position in defending the north from invasions from the south, most notably being instrumental in preventing the Undoles from conquering the north during their invasion of Westeros. Game of Thrones, Season 2 Renly discusses a potential alliance with Rob by negotiating with Caitlin. He offers to recognize Rob's dominion over everything north of Moat Kalin. Ironborn raiders seize Moat Kalin, as a part of Balon Greyjoy's campaign to conquer the north. Season 4 With majority of House Bolton's army being trapped south of the Neck due to the Ironborn occupation of the castle, Bruce Bolton orders Ramsay to take the stronghold. Ramsay has Reek use his former identity as Theon Greyjoy to convince Ironborn Garrison to surrender Moat Kalin, in exchange for safe passage back to the Iron Islands. Upon surrendering, Ramsay reneges on the agreement and has all of the Ironborn flayed alive. Season 5 Sansa and Littlefinger pass through Moat Kalin while traveling to Winterfell. Sansa mentions that she, her father, and her sister visited Moat Kalin while traveling south to King's Landing. Brienne and Pod follow them, but are forced to go all the way around the moat and the swamp instead of through it. Season 6 Littlefinger marches the Knights of the Vale to the north and encamps them at Moat Caitlin while he meets with Sansa. Renly pronounces the name, Moat Caitlin, the one time he mentions it in Season 2, but the Boltons pronounce it correctly as, Caitlin, in Season 4. While it could be a mere oversight that Renly pronounced it incorrectly it could also be seen as a sign of his ignorance of West Arrow's geography and his cavalier attitude toward being king. Renly's offer would have involved the Starks losing a substantial amount of their pre-war territory on the Neck, including Greywater Watch, but Caitlin does not mention this. Possibly it was a script error. It may also be possible that Renly has only a simplified knowledge of geography of the North, or that he was speaking vaguely and considered the North to symbolically start at Moat Caitlin because of the strategical importance of the fortress, and meant leaving the North's territory as it was. Or it is possible Renly knew what he was talking about and the price for his granting the North its independence was losing the territory south of Moat Kalin. History Raised by the ancient First Men, it is claimed that Moat Kalin has defended against southern invasions for 10,000 years. According to myth, the Greenseers of the Children of the Forest worked dark magic at Moat Kalin. 
From the Children's Tower, they are said to have used the Hammer of the Waters on the Neck to break Westeros in two, separating the North from the South in the same manner they shattered the Arm of Dorne. The children failed and only succeeded in flooding it, however, creating bogs and swamps. Some scholars discount the legend, instead attributing the watery landscape to natural events. The Marsh Kings and their Cranagmen held Moat Caelan, sometimes with the assistance of the Barrow Kings, Red Kings, and Kings of Winter, against all attacks from the south. The swampy terrain was enough to prevent Moat Caelan from falling during the coming of the Undoles to Westeros. It was a key defense of the north against which the Undol armies threw themselves time after time with no success. The Kings of Winter from House Stark eventually defeated the Marsh Kings, adding Moat Caelan to the realm of Winterfell. The wooden keep rotted away, a thousand years passed. The three remaining towers are more than capable of defending the passage to the south, however, provided that they are fully manned. Moat Caelan has never been taken from the south, although it is vulnerable from the north and the east. During Aegon's conquest, some northern lords urged King Torrin Stark to resist House Targaryen at Moat Caelan. Rather than fight the Targaryen dragons, however, Torrin instead submitted to Aegon I Targaryen at the Trident, becoming the king who knelt. A Game of Thrones Lord Eddard Stark, the hand of the king to Robert I Baratheon, instructs his wife Caitlin to have Ser Helmand Tallhart and Galbart Glover fortify Moat Caelan with a hundred bowmen each. On the march south from Winterfell after Eddard's arrest in King's Landing, Rob Stark takes the Gatehouse Tower as his seat, Great John Umber takes the Children's Tower for his, and Ricard Karstark uses the Drunkard's Tower. Rob's mother, Caitlin Stark, and Great Uncle, Ser Brynden Tully, join him at Moat Caelan with the levies of House Manderley, but the Northmen run low on supplies. Rob leaves a small force of mostly archers to hold the moat, while the rest of his army continues south toward the twins. In the books, in the A Song of Ice and Fire novels, Moat Caelan is said to have been built well over 10,000 years ago by the Children of the Forest, though the accuracy of this is unclear. The fortress commands the northern end of the causeway which carries the King's Road through the bogs and swamps of the Neck, at a point in Westeros where the swamps extend almost from coast to coast. Thus, any large host has to pass the fortress to enter the north. Due to the placement of the three surviving towers around the bottleneck and with no firm ground to deploy siege equipment to the south, a few hundred archers with sufficient ammunition could hold off a much larger army for some time from Moat Caelan. Moat Caelan was one of the vital reasons why the first men were able to successfully resist the Undol's attempts to invade the north as they did the rest of Westeros to the south. Also according to myth, the children attempted to use Moat Caelan to hold back the invading first men and, when that failed due to the human superior numbers, attempted to shatter the neck and completely separate the north from the south in the same manner they shattered the arm of Dorne centuries earlier. However, the children failed and only succeeded in flooding it, creating bogs and swamps. However, the cataclysm proved the strength of their power and may have proved instrumental in bringing the first men to agree to the terms of the pact that ended hostilities between the two races. While in the present era most of Moat Caelan's former towers have fallen into ruin, even the three remaining towers are more than capable of defending the passage to the north, provided that they are fully manned. A key point is that Moat Caelan was only designed to resist attack from the south, and thus its northern flank is relatively exposed to attack by even a small force. A Clash of Kings Victarion Greyjoy, Lord Captain of the Iron Fleet, is sent by his brother Balon, Lord of the Iron Islands, to take Moat Caelan. Instead of marching from the south, the Ironborn sail up the Saltspear and the Fever River and attack Moat Caelan from the west. After Theon Greyjoy captures Winterfell and declares himself the Prince of Winterfell, Maester Lewin counsels Theon that holding Jojen and Mira Reed as hostages will stay the hand of their father, Lord Howland Reed, the liege of the local Cranagmen. A Storm of Swords At Hag's Mire, upon receiving the news of Balon's death at Pike from the captain of the Myraham, Rob plans to march on Moat Caelan. Rob intends for Howland's Cranagmen to lead Northmen through the swamps of the Neck, so the ironborn held Moat Caelan can be attacked from the south and the north. A Feast for Crows Upon hearing of Balon's death and the return of his hated brother, Euron, Victarion leaves a token force to defend Moat Caelan under the command of Ralph Kenning and returns to the Iron Islands with his fleet to decide on the succession. The Ironborn garrison is weakened by Cranagmen attacks. Euron is crowned King of the Isles and the North during the Kingsmoot, and he commands Victarion to travel to Slaver's Bay with the Iron Fleet to bring back Daenerys Targaryen. Victarion sets sail, leaving behind his unknowing loyal garrison at Moat Caelan. 
Queen Regent Cersei Lannister expects that Ramsay Bolton, the son of the new Warden of the North, Lord Roos Bolton, will wed Arya Stark after the Ironborn lose control of Moat Caelan. A Dance with Dragons Men from houses Riswell and Dustin surprise the remaining Iron Men on the Fever River and burn their longships, cutting off the garrison of Moat Caelan from naval support. During the siege of Moat Caelan, Ramsay sends his captive, Theon Greyjoy, to offer the weakened Ironborn garrison food and safe passage if they surrender unarmed. Theon negotiates their surrender, but Ramsay has all of the Ironborn flayed and displayed along the causeway. Ramsay and Theon later meet the returning northern host of Lord Bolton and his fry allies at Moat Caelan. With the fall of Moat Caelan, Christopher Botley advises Asha Greyjoy to abandon Deepwood Moth. They are soon after captured by Stannis Baratheon. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.